and welcome to She Thinks, a podcast where you're allowed to think for yourself. I'm your host, Beverly Hallberg, and on today's episode, we are focused on dating as a conservative and the challenge it can be to find someone who shares your values and beliefs. And joining me to discuss this tough topic and help you singles out there navigate the woke dating world is John McEntee, the founder of The Right Stuff, a new dating app created for conservatives to connect in authentic and meaningful ways. Prior to launching The Right Stuff, John McEntee served in the Trump administration as a personal aide to President Trump and the director of the White House Personnel Office. He lives in Southern California, where his startup is based and has become a viral sensation on TikTok with Instagram soon to follow. John, a pleasure to have you on She Thinks. Thank you for having me. And what does it feel like to be a social media influencer? (laughs) I feel very accomplished. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, I think it's the number one job young people want these days. So you you, you have achieved that. But of course, we're going to talk about your new dating app. And the first question I have for you is why is it so hard for conservatives to find Mr. or Mrs. Right? I think um, the biggest problem with dating in general right now is that not enough people are doing it. You add on top of that being a conservative living in a progressive area and you have to hide your beliefs. You don't know, you know, you can't speak openly or freely and um, you're searching on the other apps. You're trying to find your people, but not a lot of people are open to saying they're an outright conservative because of the backlash or the hate they'll get. So being in California or New York or Chicago, where we were last week, or really anywhere else, any major city, um, being a conservative can be tough. You sometimes feel like you're alone, like there's there's no one out there like you, but really there's millions of people out there like you. And, you know, California has more registered Republicans than any state. We just need an easier way to find each other and um, connect. Yeah, it's a large state. You just have to have the the easiest way to find find people there who think like you. And I was reading up on the app and I find it really interesting that it is focused on political affiliation, not on faith or fiscal policies. Why have you decided to make it about a, more of a political ideology and affiliation than anything else? Well, when you look at dating apps, there's a dating app for almost every group. There's a dating app if you're Jewish. There's a dating app if you're a single parent. There's a dating app for music lovers, for dog owners. But until now, there wasn't a dating app for the identity most important to people, which is political affiliation. And in the past, uh, you used to see religion as the number one factor in dating. Um, But now political affiliation seems to be passing that. Conservatives want to date conservatives and liberals want to date liberals. Um, Conservatives actually are a little more open to dating the other side. The other side is not as open to dating us. That's fine. Um, so what we're doing is putting everyone in one place and saying, we're taking that off the table. It's one less thing to worry about. It saves you a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money. Everyone here is kind of like you in this way. We have similar worldview, similar values. Um, it makes things a lot easier. So as far as how the app works, how do you identify whether or not somebody is truly a conservative? For example, do you have any bots in there trying to pretend to be conservative, but they really aren't? I would say one out of every hundred profiles is somebody spamming or bot or troll and we have a report feature and you just report it and then we ban them you know it's very simple um it's a dating app for republicans uh so people go to it for that reason so it's not hard to say are you a republican we won't let you in you know there's thousands and thousands of republicans on it you wouldn't really go to it unless you're looking for that um so that's pretty easy we also have an invite structure so we have a lot of our our users invite other users, so other like-minded people, and it's growing that way. So we don't have a problem with finding conservatives or getting only conservatives on the app. That's what it's for, and that's that's how it's being used. Can you give us some of the data so far? When did you launch it, and how many users do you have? Yeah, we launched our official version one in January, and we have 40,000 monthly active users. And any success stories so far? We have five engagements Great. with the first wedding coming up in September. Are you invited to the wedding? I am, yeah. I am. <laughs> and I so I, yeah. I, I was even thinking, even as we have um, the primary heating up, is there anything you're introducing on this app that is going to even put the different candidates on there and having people choose who they plan to vote for? No, this app actually isn't um, very political. It's for conservatives, but it it works just like any other dating app. The only differentiator is that it's for conservatives and that we have a very unique feature where you can post a date. So if you need a plus one to a wedding or if you have an extra ticket to a concert, you can actually post that event on the app and then see who's interested. We want to emphasize 
getting out, going out, living. You know, we're conservatives. We want to go out. We want to have fun. We don't want to be, you know, locked in the basement with our triple mask on. So um, those are really the big differentiators, just the network and then that one unique feature emphasizing getting people out. Now, as you've jumped into this world where you're trying to connect people who want to date, and I assume most people on this app dating for marriage, so looking to find somebody to settle down with, what would you say are some of the challenges of modern day dating? I, obviously, we have this virtual component, which has pros and cons, but a lot of pros actually met my husband through a dating app. So I, I've which used app dating. Which was that? Just it curious. Was it okay, was hinged. Yeah. So um, I don't think yours was around yet when when I used it. Yeah. And so there, there are a lot of pros to that. What would you say dating is like with this virtual component, pros and cons that you've experienced? The pros of a dating app are that it's a tool you can use, you know, to get to where you want to go. And with a dating app, at least there's a little bit of intention there, especially on ours, because people are, you know, dating more seriously, uh, like you said, marriage, but just you know, serious dating, not as casual as a Tinder or a Bumble. Um, so there's that. With social media in general, I think that's really damaged dating. I think people have too much access to too, mu too many people. It's overstimulating. Guys, you know, are uh, shying away from commitment because they think, oh, I could just, you know, find another person or, you know. So I think social media has sort of had a very negative effect on dating. I think dating apps... Um, are a tool you can use. I don't see any downside to them because what you're doing on a dating app, people will say, oh, but you're swiping through a lot of people. Well, that's what I do in person too. You know, if I go to a concert, I'm also just swiping through the crowd and then seeing the girl I want to approach. It's a similar concept and everyone here is dating with intention, um, which is the, the most important thing. And I've given advice to people and you could tell me if this is bad advice. I, it, it was what the approach that I took, which was just laid out up front what my faith was, what my politics were, what I'm looking for, because it weeds so many people out. So you've already done that from the political angle with your with your app. But do you find those subjects we're supposed to not talk about? It's actually good to lay that out there up front to even know if you're compatible. I think that is. And that's why we encourage people on our app to use our prompts and to have a a concise but like informative bio telling a little bit about yourself. Predominantly, um, it's a Christian, you know, most of our users are Christian, but obviously there's some Jewish, a lot of Catholic, everyone's pretty much faith-based. Um, so getting on our app, you kind of know that ahead of time, which like you said, saves a lot of a lot of time and energy. With the other apps, I think people feel they can't be as open as you were um, because of some hostility they'll face or, you know, people might try to, you know, go after them for it or call them out or, you know, it, it feels like a hostile environment with when, when you're on a one of the other dating apps, a lot of the leftism is built into the app itself, you know, just filling out your thing that's like, do you want to use this sticker or this tag, but it's all left wing stuff or, you know, we're supporting this cause and 10% of, you know, our, our funds will go to this and it's a left wing cause. And um, so on our app, you don't have any of that. We're actually probably the least political in that sense. And just as far as the issue of marriage, do you think that most people are on this dating app for marriage and that you find conservatives especially really do desire to find that person to settle down with? I think the majority are on for that reason. It's being used in a lot of different ways. There's also a lot of young people on it who might not be ready for marriage, but they want something more serious. So it's being used in a lot of ways. Our average user is 28, 29 years old, definitely looking to settle down, definitely wanting a family. And yeah, like we said, there's uh, five engagements so far. We hope there's 500 more soon. And I want to kind of go back into your career as well and what led you to this point. So as I was reading in the bio, you were a personal assistant to President Trump when he was president. What was it like working in the White House? And was there anything that happened during time at the White House where you said, I really need to help conservatives find find a partner? Um. Working at the White House was a great honor. Uh, President Trump was a great boss. I can learn. A, I did learn a lot from just following him around, watching him, how he worked. Um, you know, the White House is a pretty majestic place. When you're walking the halls, um, you know, it can almost take your breath away at times. Uh, it's fast paced. If anybody wants to work in politics, get ready. Uh, it's a lot of young people. It's a lot of, you know, grinding it out day after day. But it's fun to see what you're working on affect people's everyday lives. Um, when I was working in DC and New York, being a conservative, I found that it was kind of hard to go out 
and meet people outside of the people you worked with, um, especially D.C., which is somewhat hostile to Republicans. And that sort of kind of shaped my view of, oh, maybe, you know, conservatives do need an easier way to find each other, especially in these these hostile progressive cities. And you make a lot of fun videos on TikTok. <laughs> How do you come up with your content for that? And what have you found to be successful as far as how much content you need to put out on a regular basis? Like what is what is your rotation of content? Sure. Um, so to get started, uh, we started, you know, doing these TikTok videos in January and it took a couple months and every day we would post two or three and then finally it got traction. We would always think they're funny, uh, but some of the other people, you know, some some got traction, some didn't. And it wasn't until about March that it started to take off. As for the ideas, a lot of them came from Danielle in our office, who was very creative. And I would just kind of act out whatever she told me to. And now we have a lot of people sending us stuff because we have a bigger following. And they'll say, oh, you should do this. Or I saw this at the airport. You should make fun of that. Um, so we just, you know, or just from our everyday life, if we have, you know, the other day I was at the airport, had time to kill because the flight was delayed. I put out a message on Instagram. Is anybody at O'Hare Airport? Uh, one guy was like, I am. He came. We filmed some funny videos. You know, we're just kind of winging it. Um, but we do try to put things out every day and our following is growing. And that's good because the more eyes, the better. And it gets more people on our app. And I've talked about TikTok quite a bit on this podcast because there does seem to be a divide in the Republican Party. Maybe it's more on the the age side of things of how regulated TikTok should be. And I've said to you, to a lot of people, if you want to reach young people, TikTok is where it's at. It's the most popular social media platform. What do you say about the concerns that people have about TikTok? And do you think it's a necessary evil if you want to reach young people? No, I think all of that is way overblown. I think like you said, that's where all of the eyes are and that's where all of the young people are. So any conservative that isn't on it, isn't promoting a message there is missing out on a little bit. Um, people have security concerns. When you look at TikTok's, you know, um, um, you know, their privacy policies and their data sharing and whatever they're tracking, you know, they're worried about China tracking you. It's very similar to every other app. Um, people are really worried because it's tied into China. Well, you know, Google's tied into China as well. Um, this is actually a competitor to Silicon Valley for conservatives that want to go after big tech. Well, TikTok's not part of big tech, you know, it's Chinese, but it's actually a competitor the, the, to all the things you hate. Um, so when you, when you try to take down TikTok, you're helping Facebook. Um, so I just think all of that's overblown. And, you know, we, we gave up the data stuff a long time ago. Like our phones know what we're doing. Um, they know what we're, you know, that's how the algorithms work. So if China knows I like, you know, watching chocolate molding videos or, you know, you know, Christian inspirational videos or whatever it is, like, so be it. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's way overblown. I think it's conservatives throwing red meat to their base saying we're going after tech, but we want them to go after big tech and TikTok's a competitor to that. So. And just kind of as we round out the conversation, I was hoping we could end this with some advice from you. So here you have started a dating app. What are the things that, or what are the best steps you would give somebody as they're using an app? What should they do? What shouldn't they do? Anything at all that would be helpful? So there's two things. I think girls need to give these guys a chance. You know, I think that's that's the, the biggest thing we're trying to do with posting a date is saying like, look, this guy has a fun thing. Um, go give it a try. Just put yourself out there. I think that's number one. Um, you don't have a lot to lose. Just go for it, you know? And then the guys, they actually need to put in a little bit more effort when making their profiles on these apps. Um, so yesterday, for an example, we put something on our, on our Instagram, kind of giving an example of use bright photos, you know, show a picture of something you're passionate about. You know, show you can clean up nice, throw on a suit, have a picture at a friend's wedding, whatever it is. Um, so I think the guys need to put in a little more effort into their profiles and into dating in general. And I think the guy, the girls need to be a little more open and give these guys a little bit more of a chance. And I'm curious, what is the breakdown of women versus men who are members or who use the app? We have actually... Um, pretty close to 50 50 right. but slightly more women believe sure. it or not because all of our marketing is targeted towards women all of our merchandise is for women 
you know, all the funny things I do or the dating series is all targeted towards women. So we're kind of going with the get the women first and then all the guys will follow. And it's been working so far and hopefully uh, continues. Well, hopefully you'll get a few more um, people signing up for the app based on listening to this episode today. It's called The Right Stuff. John McEntee, thank you so much for joining us and also for creating a place where conservatives can date. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us. Before you go, IWF does want you to know that we rely on the generosity of supporters like you. An investment in IWF fuels our efforts to enhance freedom, opportunity, and well-being for all Americans. So please consider making a small donation to IWF by visiting iwf.org backslash donate. That is iwf.org backslash donate. Last, if you enjoyed this episode of She Thinks, do leave us a rating or a review. It does help. And we love it if you shared this episode so your friends can know where they can find more She Thinks. From all of us here at IWF, Thanks for watching.